joined today by one of the vicars at St. Helen's um, Church. Good morning, Reverend Anne. Good morning. Good morning. So we're going to begin our assembly today with our welcome words. We are gathered here today as a community to worship together and to think about our value of courage. So, um, Anne, I think you've got a really um, inspirational um, person that you're going to tell us about today, Florence Nightingale, so I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Good morning everyone. When I was eight, that's a very long time ago now, I was taken to hospital by ambulance for an emergency operation as I had appendicitis. I had never been in a hospital before, so it was a new and rather un uncomfortable experience for me, but all was well and I was returned home safely. Have you or your family ever been poorly and had to go to hospital? Did you notice all the hard work the nurses were doing to care for the patients and help them get better? Today, nurses are recognised as important, super skilled professionals, but that hasn't always been the case. Believe it or not, at the start of the 19th century, that's the 1800s, nurses usually have no training at all and they weren't even paid very much for the menial work they did. But one woman changed all that, and her name was Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale was born in the city of Florence, Italy, on the 12th of May, 1820, while her parents were enjoying a long holiday, and that's how she got her name. Her parents were called William and Fanny Nightingale, and she had an older sister. William Nightingale was a wealthy banker and he was able to provide his family with a very privileged life. They had servants and two lovely houses, a winter home in Hampshire and a summer home in Derbyshire. At that time, Florence didn't go to school and most girls didn't go to school then. In fact, many didn't receive any education at all, but William was very keen for his daughters to learn and he gave them lessons in lots of different subjects, including science, history, and maths. In Victorian Britain, wealthy women, women like uh, Florence, weren't expected to work. Their job was to marry, to marry well, and to look after the home. Daily life was spent seeing to servants, entertaining guests, reading, sewing, and attending social events. But Florence saw something very different for her future. When she was 16 years old, she believed she heard a voice from God calling for her to carry out important work to help the suffering. And so she decided to become a nurse. Now, when Florence told her parents they were not happy at all, nursing wasn't a respectable profession. And what's more, hospitals were filthy, horrible places where sick people died. Certainly no place for a wealthy girl like Florence. William tried hard to change his daughter's mind, but Florence was determined. She, she, she uh, didn't agree to marry anyone. She had lots of proposals. She was a very beautiful and attractive girl. And every time anybody wanted to marry her, she said, no, I have something else I need to do with my life. And when she was 30, her parents eventually gave in and they allowed Florence to study nursing at a Christian school for women in Germany. There she learned important skills in caring for patients and the importance of hospital cleanliness. It wasn't long before Florence put her new skills to the test. By 1853, she was running a women's hospital in London, where she did a fantastic job improving the working conditions as well as patients' care. In 1854, the Crimean War broke out, a war with Britain, France and Turkey on one side and Russia on the other. British troops went off to fight in the Crimea, which was a very, very long way away from Britain, an area in the south of Russia. It's now part of the Ukraine. News soon reached home of soldiers dying from battle wounds, cold, hunger and sickness with no real medical care or nurses to treat them. Help was needed fast, and the Minister of War, called Sidney Herbert, asked Florence to lead a team of nurses to the Crimea. 
When they arrived, the nurses found the army hospital in Scutari, that was the area where the soldiers were, was in a terrible state. It was overcrowded and filthy, with blocked drains, broken toilets, and rats running everywhere. Imagine the smell. There weren't enough medical supplies or equipment, and wounded soldiers had to sleep on the floor, often without blankets to keep them warm, clean water to drink, or fresh food to eat. Not surprisingly, disease spread quickly, and most of the soldiers died from infection. And in those days, there were no antibiotics. Florence knew that the soldiers could only get well again if the hospital conditions improved. With funds from back home, she bought better medical equipment and decent food and paid for workmen to clean the drains. And together with her team, she cleaned the wards, set up a hospital kitchen and provided the wounded soldiers with quality care, bathing them, dressing their wounds and feeding them. And as a result of all the improvements, far fewer soldiers were dying from disease. Florence Nightingale truly cared for her suffering patients. At night, when everyone was sleeping, she'd visit the soldiers to make sure they were comfortable. She also wrote letters home for them for those who couldn't write themselves. And since Florence carried a lantern with her on her night visits, the soldiers called her the Lady with the Lamp. By the time Florence returned to England in 1856, she'd made quite a name for herself. After newspapers wrote about her work in the Crimea, people thought of her as a heroine. And Queen Victoria herself wrote her a letter to say thank you for everything that she had done. But Florence had no care for fame, and she often called herself Miss Smith to hide who she really was. Even though the war was over, there was still work to be done. She set about writing letters to important people telling them what was wrong with army hospitals. And in September 1856, she met the Queen herself to discuss ways to improve military medical systems. Huge reforms took place. The army started to train doctors, hospitals became cleaner, and soldiers were provided with better clothing, food, and care. In 1860, the Nightingale Training School for Nurses opened at St. Thomas's Hospital in London. Not only did the school provide excellent nurse training, it made nursing a respectable career for women who wanted to work outside the home. Sadly, Florence suffered from illness for much of her later life, largely because of all her hard work helping sick people. In fact, during her final 40 years, she spent many days confined to bed, but she was greatly appreciated for everything she did for nursing. In 1907, Florence became the first woman to receive the Order of Merit, an award given by the Queen for outstanding work. Florence Nightingale died in her sleep on the 13th of August, 1910, aged 90 but she will be forever recognized as the founder of modern nursing. There is a memorial to her in the crypt of St. Paul's Cathedral in London. International Nurses Day is celebrated worldwide on the 12th of May each year, the anniversary of Florence's birthday. So let's close our eyes for a moment and imagine Florence Nightingale working hard in the hospital in Scutari. She must, have found, it very she must difficult. have found it very difficult. But she didn't give up because she knew how important it was to help the soldiers. She knew she was making a difference. And she had the courage to go far, far away from home to a situation that she didn't know what she was going to find. And she put herself really in danger among all those people who had so much disease and so much. Uh, wounds and things that uh, she could catch from, she could catch the diseases from them. So let us um, think about things being difficult. Do you ever find things difficult? Do you sometimes feel like giving up? When are there times when you have to rely on courage for yourselves to do something that you find difficult? or something that you're afraid of doing. 
you to think about those things. And something else that you can think about, some of you may well have been to hospital, but you may have seen things about hospitals on the television. And there are lots of other people who work in hospitals besides nurses. There are people like physiotherapists who help people to get better when they perhaps had injuries to their arms or their legs, or sometimes even with their breathing. There are dietitians who talk about uh, what you should eat to be a well person and to be a healthy person. And there are cleaners. Now, which of these jobs do you think are the most important? Physiotherapists, nurses, dietitians, doctors, and cleaners. And in what ways do you think Florence Nightingale made life better for those in her care? So let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for the people who care for us when we are sick. Thank you for people who spend their lives caring for people in hospital. Help us to find ways to help and care for other people so that we can make a difference to others at school and at home and when we grow up. Help us to have the courage to do what we know we ought to do. Amen. Thank you so much, Anne. Wow, what an incredible life she had. And after, like you said, you know, all those years of illness as well. And she lasted till 90. She's I know, amazing. amazing. What a, a strong woman she was and really changed the world for, of nursing. So we are incredibly grateful for her all of the, the things she did. Now we're going to end our assembly today with a song and just like Florence's kind hands we've got a song that's all about Jesus's hands are kind hands so we'll leave you with that today enjoy your Monday and the rest of your week and remember on Wednesday it is going to be Florence Nightingale's um, Remembrance Day every year that was like Anne wasn't it on the 12th? 12th of May yes. Yeah, so um, we'll try and think about her on Wednesday and all the amazing things she's done. Remember what you've told us. Thank you, Anne. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.